Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the inn. We are speeding through, doing card reviews, whatever, because there's not much more, much time left until the Boomsday Project releases. So let's talk about mechs, shall we? Starting off with Skaterbot, a one-cost, one-one mech with Magnetic and Rush. Nice. Um, I don't really see you playing this on one. I really don't see you playing this by itself later on in the game. Maybe you attach this cheaply to a minion, uh, after, to a mech after you play it to give it rush and, you know, have it get rid of uh, that annoying minion. So maybe it will see playing powder for that reason. But for Hunter, uh, once you go Dr. Boom, there's really no reason for Skaterbot. And it's incredibly weak by itself. And I think that, uh, I think no matter what the mech deck, I think you have a lot better choices on one. Both in Hunter, not in Hunter, both in um, Paladin and in Warrior. And you have better better mech choices throughout the game. So I really don't think, besides maybe if you discover a mech, I really don't see any reason to pick Skater Bot. So I think, even in Wild, I think that there are a lot better mech choices on one and on later turns. So it's intriguing. Um, but it's not something I think you're going to... Uh, Pack it, pack in your in your deck. I think it's just going to be something you're like, I'll just I'll just discover it later. Uh, I don't think you you um your mech deck. If anything, what I really like is as far as Skaterbot goes, is I love the flavor of the text because it does make reference to the to the Errol Levine song of Skater Boy, and I'm just like, thank you guys. Over at Team Five for Release doing that. Um, if anything, you're more or less right on having Skaterbot in your deck. I the, the only combination I would potentially think of is to potentially just go Skaterbot with Mechanico Egg. Just be like, all right, I need to get this eight a Robo Sore out just because I want it out of the egg, and then just bonk. You know, but let me why, this one six. But why not uh, attach an Anoyo module to the end? Or attach a Bronze Gatekeeper to the end? Yeah, yeah, there are, like you said, there are better choices, but it's just like, if I just want to be able to just run it out there real fast, zoom, Skater Bot gets the rocket boost with its rocket-powered uh, skateboard, and that's, that's not even just it, and just flop. Skater bot, you know, it, 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 it's all right. No, 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 no. You say it like it's it. Yeah, it's it. It's there you go. There you go. All right. If anything, we're gonna go floops. Glorious gloop. One cost. Legendary spell for druid. Whenever a minion dies this turn, gain one mana crystal this turn only. Which makes me sit down and wonder, if I decide to play Floop's Glorious Gloop, and then I decide to drop down something like Primordial Drake, to try to like clear my opponent's board, and potentially kill stuff on my side of the board, I regain my mana crystals for each creature that dies. So it's just like, bloop. Gloop, and then fly it back around, and it's just like, okay, so I've done practically nothing this turn, and I've got a 4 8 on my board. Middle finger to you. And then I drop my uh, Lich King down and just walk away for that turn. I think that seems strong, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if, even if it's just like, you know, you gain one mana crystal this turn. If you're playing a token-based deck and you just need to get something like big or at least you just want to be able to have your token combos out there faster, this thing's nice. Very useful. I, I definitely think it's sees play. Oh. Yeah, I think it's it's strong, but not in the mana ramp kind of way. So I think it's strong in just a really nice, really right way because it, it challenges Druid not to, okay, you're going to use this ramp. It challenges them to... You're not really going to ramp. You're, we are now challenging you to manage your resources and see if we can make the most out of this particular turn. And so, if they can, if the druid can manage the resources correctly, they might be able to pull off a bonkers turn. 
and pull and pull pull ahead in a desperate situation. If not, they're going to waste their turn because these these mana crystals don't stick around. Mainly, they're probably going to be refilling, you know, empty, emptying out um, the mana they have, throwing enemy uh, minions into other minions to kill minions off to refill up refill up their mana to play more things. It's pretty much it turns that one turn into kind of like this puzzle combo situation of trying to figure out how best to manage your resources to get the most out of your tr out of this one turn. And I think that's really cool. It's something I don't think Big Druid is going to be able to do. Big Druid cannot use this card because, you know, they're focusing on big minions. They're going to have a hard time really filling up uh filling up their mana crystals. Yeah, they can do it, but they're not going to get the most out of it. I think I like a smaller mid-range uh, or combo oriented deck um, tokens. or tokens especially I was getting to that can <laughs> use this and go wild and go nuts with this like I would say even Malgo's druid could use this because you know swipes on a, on a, on a uh, full board would allow us which actually start filling up your mana pool again so you can cast more spells so like I said this is very uh, this is very combo and token uh, and token friendly not so much big druid friendly, which I think is really nice to see, in a in an expansion that really went a little overboard with uh, allowing druid to get big things out. So this is this is a good spell to see. I think it's very good. I th I don't think it's as immediately bonkers as a lot of the other stuff we've seen, and it's going to basically require a lot of thought and pre planning to use correctly. So I actually approve. Next up, we have Coppertail Imposter, which is a 4-cost 4-4 four four mech. With the battle cry, gain stealth until your, until your next turn. This is meta-defining. It's going to see play. I'm not, I'm not even going, going to blink and just go into why. Guys, this, it's just good all around. As a good stat line, it can be stealth. You magnetize. It sees play. Well, not only that, but if you want to, because it's a battle cry minion... You can also include it in your Shutterwalk deck, just in case your Shutterwalk combo gets a little bit screwy or, you know, messed up, and you can just, like, you can hide your Shutterwalk just because. But yeah, if anything, there, there's no need to sit here and kind of discuss this. Like, when I was looking over the four-cost uh, cards, I was like, all right, which one of these mechs is going to get played? You know, the new piloted Shredder, the... Uh, Sneed's party shredder, and then this came around. I'm like, well, it's this one. So you might as well call it what it is. Metal pirate squirrel is going to see play in a lot of decks. Oh yeah, no doubt. Gonna go to trending Torin. Six cost three Tending. four. Tending trending. We're almost there. <laughs> Tending Torin three six cost three four. Choose one. Give your other minions plus one plus one or summon two to two trance. This is good. This goes with your token decks. This makes it to where you do have the um the spell power of the wild. Or you just get to go, oh, I'm gonna make two trees on the board. Okay. Especially around that six cost area where your opponent's going to be able to potentially have a response or answer for it. Or at least, you know, to start trying to clear your board. And if you just keep putting stuff on the board, your opponent's just going to go, well, I can't do crap. Screw it. Scoop. <laughs> uh, definitely sees play. Yeah, it definitely sees play. It's like, there was a lot of doubts of, like, like I had no doubts that the Treant... Uh cards would, would pretty much go into a token deck and kind of help guide the direction of the token deck. I had no doubt about that, but if anybody had any doubts, Tending Torrin lays them to rest because basically it's an all-around good token druid card. It gives you more treants if you still want to go in that direction, like if you need some more board presence, or if, if not, you just put it down and give everything plus one, plus one. You run two of these in a deck, in your deck, your token deck, um, and I, I do think this absolutely Bumps token druid up to a deck that I think we will see make a huge resurgence in this meta, and this will and we'll see play because of the card. While we're on the subject, uh, Blizzard, can we see you make a card called Trending Torrent in a future set? I want to see what that looks like and what that does. Make it happen. <laughs> Next up, yeah, a, a Torrent right there on a cell phone, just just glancing at it. Uh -huh. It looks like I'm trending. Looks like I'm trending. 
Next up, we have Mechano Egg, which is a 5 cost 0 5 Paladin mech with a Death Rattle, summon an 8 8 Robosaur. Which is, of course, a mech as well. Uh, yeah, this sees play in uh, Mech Paladin, absolutely. Uh, with Magnetic, you can definitely attach things, uh, minions to the egg to basically make it a threat. Bump it into things. We either give it Taunt, give it Rush, give it whatever you want. There's a lot of options uh, to make this viable in a. Uh, and a Paladin mech deck, and then when, it, when then it, it dies, and you have an 8-8 Robosaur, which you can buff up if you want to as well. It's really cool. If Mechano, Mechano Egg is resummoned uh, later on uh, by your uh, Paladin spell, that's fine. You get another 8-8 Robosaur, because it's going to be buffed up like you had left it buffed up before. This is a very strong card. I think, uh, mech Pal I think all Mech Paladin is going to run at least one of these, if not two. I'm not sure how many I'm going to run just yet. i got to figure out my balance, but if anything, yes, I am playing this. Yes, it does see play. It's just too good to not. And plus, if anything, you can take this. If you, if you honestly want to, you can put this down on five and then spike root steed it on six and make it a 211 with taunt. The other thing you've got to worry about at that point is silence, but you have to worry about that anyway with any deck so definitely sees at least a one of plus or two of plus with uh with uh mech, mech paladin or any mech deck it's like you have to worry about silence that's true but since you're doing a lot of magnetization your opponent's gonna have to play the game of what thing do i want to stop i only have so many silences only at certain points what do i use it and am i using it correctly I, i've seen a lot of decks where basically i have things that are Weak to silence or transform effects, and then they'll they'll make the do make the silence and transform play. And I'm just looking, going, buddy, you made the wrong move. Yeah, it's like that was a big mistake. However, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Glotron. One cost, one three mech with magnetic for Paladin. This is good. This is a strong one drop that you get to play out there. Instead of playing like your Dire Mole, now you get to just be like, alright, I have my class exclusive. You Voltron! Cease play. High end, I don't care which side of the Paladin spectrum you're gonna, you know, fall on at this point, whether you're gonna go aggro, or whether you're gonna go, like, mech aggro, or whatever. Um, cease play. Definitely. Boom. Absolutely better defining card. Cease play because... It's very strong in the early game, as we've seen with with uh, Dire Mole, and then in the later game, you just attach this to another mech, and you just make you just make it uh, a little bit stronger. For one, there's really no downsides with this card in a Mech Paladin deck, so absolutely you play it. Next up, we have Weapons Project, which is a two cost warrior spell that says each player equips a two three weapon and gains six armor. I think in a more controlling warrior deck, they definitely play this. Um, because they can use the weapon to help control the board. They get the six armor. Uh, other warrior decks are not going to worry as and the, and the controlling warrior is not going to worry as much uh, as much because they're definitely going to be they they definitely think they're going to be able to take that six extra life they just gave you away from you. Uh, if you're more aggro mid range warriors, not going to worry about it because again they can do the same thing um, and they can take take out that uh, that armor. And what do they really care if you have a two three weapon? It's not very strong for very long. And if they have weapon removal, they can just play that immediately, get rid of your weapon, and ha ha ha, we're just going to beat the armor out of you, and we have the advantage. I think Warrior plays this, absolutely. Does it go into every deck? No. But I do think it's incredibly strong, and I do think it's going to see play. Yeah, if anything, this really does... It, it's too good to not see play. Like, I watched it with the live stream when they did stream it, and my internet wasn't being a total complete dick butt, but if anything, like, oh, my opponent has Skull of, Skull of Minari on, the, on their side of the board, and I just play Weapons Project, and that Skull of Minari, gone. Aluneth, my opponent's side of the board, gone. Just for a two-cost spell, you don't have to run your oozes at this point. Yeah, sure, you're giving your opponent six armor and a 2-3 weapon, but... Oh no! I got rid of their weapon! Nah, 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 thunk. 
the only thing that you're going to have to really worry about at that point, or at least at this point when it comes to this metagame now, I would say is Valianir because Valianir is a death rattle effect and it's just, they want that effect. They want to be able to just have it to where that weapon explodes. Oh, and Kingsbane. King's been going back into the deck and things like that and happen to be drawn back out. I mean, yes, there's Cavern Shiny Finder for it, but eh. As long as you kind of disrupt your opponent's go and flow of their play, that's at least a good thing to have. Are we good on Weapons Project, Bob? Yeah, it's just the fact that, you know, Valonir, like you brought out, and it's important to talk about Valonir because Valonir is definitely going to see play and Powden with Mech Powden because I, uh, Mainly because of how uh, Kangor's, Kandor's, or basically his endless army works, that makes uh, that makes uh, Valinir a lot stronger. Um, so basically, it's something you have to keep in mind because that's definitely a weapon we're going to see in the new meta. And you brought up Aluneth, which is a weapon I think is going to disappear in the new meta because Luna is just a lot better. Okay. So next up, you have Spirit Bomb, two costs, Warlock spell, deal four damage to a minion and your hero. So for two mana, you get to basically cast Shadow Bolt on a minion and hit yourself four. I th That's good, especially for your even Warlocks. Because if anything, like even Warlock decides, oh hey, look, I'm gonna be running my uh, lesser jas, my lesser spell stone, and I don't care to take that four damage. I'll just heal it back. It's no big deal to me. So, firstly, I do think it definitely does see play on the high end side of things. Uh, secondly, I do also love the flavor text of Spirit Bomb. <laughs> Especially when you're saying, oh yeah, it'll take a few uh, episodes to charge up. Great kickback reference to Dragon Ball Z. Thank you again, Blizzard, for that sort of thing. Bulb. I think this sees play in some Warlock decks. Um, because some Warlock decks can definitely make use of it. Um, I don't think this sees play in Control or Q Block, because I think they have enough damaging, damaging spells and damaging effects already. Um... I think Spirit Bomb just dilutes the deck because I think the others are just better and more versatile. And they are not going to care about early chip damage because they can just make that up and use their clears later on. I think in more aggressive decks, probably, especially with um, a, a card coming up, I think um, maybe an even lock, like you said. I don't think it's going to see a wide use of play. Because Warlock just has so many tools at this point, Spirit Bomb actually just might fall through the cracks. Next up, we have Crystallizer, which is a 1 cost 1-3 one with a battle cry. Deal 5 damage to your hero, gain 5 armor. Um, yeah, I think this is going to see play, especially in aggressive decks, because they're uh, uh, aggressive uh, Baku decks, because they're really not going to care. Um, that downside is really not much of a downside, and Warlock especially, it's incredibly not much of a downside. They are essentially just plopping down a 1-3 one, for 1, and really, there's really not much of a downside there. It's, it does get more dangerous to play later on in the game because, you know, health becomes a lot more precious. Uh, but especially if you're playing it early on, in the early to mid game, it's it's not that big a deal. Most, I think, aggressive decks are not going to care about the supposed downside. I think they'll, I think this is going to see a lot of play. Oh, yeah. You, you, this is going to see a lot, a lot of play. I mean, you get to see this in Warlock because it procs their... Uh, whenever I'm dealt damage, I get to use whatever, like, you know, the Spellstone, uh, or any of the other minions and things like that, especially the Al next Although, game we're going to talk about. I was thinking about, uh, let me walk back on, because I was thinking Baku Paladin, and then went great. Baku Paladin already has a one cost one thing. They don't need Crystallizer. Not, they're not even going to bother with this card. Yeah, if anything, like, the Baku Paladin, no, they don't need that. But if anything, if they want to, they can. They can play Crystallizer in a um, aggressive style because if anything, they can just if they they can heal it back, no problems, or at least a controlling style. Doesn't matter either way. Um, Warrior will definitely play this. Here you're playing one. Oh no, I take five damage in health, but I get five armor. Your turn. 
Again, <laughs> Warrior has a Turnium Rover, which is better. This is true. However, if anything, this can see play in Warrior as well, as Freyar pointed out. And Priest! Priest can just heal the damage back to itself that it's taken and have the five armor. To be fair, a lot of the classes that you think are going to run it aren't going to run it. Um, Hunter's not going to run it because they still have Dire Mole. Oh no, th that Hunter doesn't need to run it. So I, uh, Priest could run it, but I think they're going to run uh, Northshire Cleric instead. Um... Because it's still a one cost one three, and it's going to allow them to have card draw. They don't need it. Um, to be fair, I think this really does just leave. I think this leaves rogue. I think this leaves um, warlock. I think those are going to be your two classes that use this. If anything, definitely warlock because the next card that I'm jumping into right now. If you want to make a really quick uh, high end threat on the board you play this with nether soul buster it's three cost one five demon with a battle cry gain one attack for each damage your hero has taken this turn so if anything you play two crystallizers you take 10 damage you gain 10 armor and then you play uh, another soul buster for an 11 five that's not nuts at all is it Volf? <laughs> oh, I've I've seen how how scary this thing this thing can be. Um, so if, yeah, yeah, so if anything, yeah, it's another soul buster. Another soul buster is a really good card that you're gonna get to see for like you know you can tap and play another soul get a three five or like I said the crystal laser effect to be able to get yourself an eleven five out there. You've got so many different things you can do with Nether Soul Buster. I think it does see play in a zoo type style. So Ab absolutely. Like I said, we we got a preview of a new type of zoo deck that, that's coming and Nether Soul Buster was scary. Like really free freaky scary. And I think it's going it's definitely going to see play because zoo's going we're going to be more aggressive. We want to take we want to just finish off the game some more. And I think even if you marry Nether Soul Buster and Crystallizer into like a, like a he, into like heal, uh, heal Zulok, that's very scary because like okay, I take all this damage and I heal back and just bump and just dump all dump some happy ghouls on the board and you're going your opponent's like going holy crap. So yeah, Nether Soul, oh Soul Buster goodness. definitely sees play. Another card that definitely sees play in a scary Zulok. Uh, scenario i've been kind of been seeing and we've been, i've kind of been talking up with um omega agent the like is soul infusion which is a one cost warlock spell it says give the leftmost minion in your hand plus two plus two basically wait, wait okay. until uh the minion you want want to get buffed is the leftmost minion play soul infusion and all of a sudden that minion has plus two plus two and the the zoo lock i'm imagining has minions that are going to make copies of themselves so they're going to already be buffed up. Play them on the board. They go boom and spread out. Play Kelaseth in this type of deck. Holy crap, this is going to be pants wedding scary. I mean, if anything, like, Kelaseth is already ran in uh, Warlock. So it's just like, ugh. And then there's the main thing you have to sit down and worry about is hand positioning. That's your biggest fear. It's like, okay, I got to be able to make sure I position this just right. Especially with the next card on the list, which is Doubling Imp. Three cost, two, two. Battle cry of summon a copy of this minion. So you basically got uh, Doppelganger, but at this point it's uh, Gangster Imp. <laughs> and you just. Okay, battle cry. I summon a copy of this minion. Woohoo! Um, just doubling him definitely does see play, even if it's not powered up in your aggressive zoo type decks, or at least your zoo types. So, ball, I'm kicking this one back over to you. Oh, definitely. This is very scary, especially if you can get get this buffed up, plop it on the board, makes it, it basically summons a copy, and it's like. Just the ability for zoo, I think, going into the next expansion to just create. Massive board presence with very little effort is actually very scary. And I think Doubling Imp is going to play a huge part of that. Next up, we have Harbinger Celestia, which is a 4-cost 5-6 legendary uh, minion with, st with stealth and the effect 
after your opponent plays a minion, become a copy of it. Now, this isn't going to be, become a copy of every minion it plays. It's just the first minion. This is essentially your entity, the minion. You plop this on the board. Your opponent knows what it is. They have to play around it because the next minion they play, it's going to become a copy of it and it's stealth at the moment. If your opponent is, it doesn't play around it to play, play a small thing, and they, 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 they're kind of going, oh, I don't know, you know, worrying about it. Then the next turn, you just have Harbinger Celestia hit him in the face. So either they have to look at removing the minion, or they have to play around it to make the minion smaller and not a threat, so they can then play their bigger, more threatening minion. Um, I think this is really cool as a control tool. Um, this is really, I think this is a minion I'm interested in experimenting with. And I do think it's going to see some degree of play. Well, mainly because think of it as a control tool in the in how Sylvanas was controlled. To. Because you can plop it on an empty board and say you have to deal with this. Because if you don't, I will use it to take something of yours later on. So your opponent would have to make suboptimal trades and suboptimal moves to deal with deal with the Sylvanas, or the Sylvanas would give value, and that's what Harbinger Celestia is going to do. They're going to have to find some way to deal with Harbinger Celestia in the same way. Or you're going to get some. So are you going to get a lot of value out of it? And that they can either deal with Sarbinger Celestia by um, trying to remove it before they play a play their big minion, or by playing a smaller minion suboptimally so that's no longer a threat before they play their big minion it might waste a turn. So, like I said, I think it has a lot of a lot of uh, room in that regards, and I think that's where it's useful. You're you're not going to be 100. I'm always going to get a good thing with this. It's basically oh, to no. control and basically control your opponent's board by essentially making them play suboptimally to get rid of this. We play Goblin Bomb. <laughs> Eddie, play... Eddie, no one plays Goblin Bomb. Let's be honest. I'm gonna play, um, play Goblin Bomb. I'm gonna play um, Firefly and or the little Firefly token that's up with it. I'm going to play something that's like a really crappy one cost, or at least something that's really, you know, not necessary. <laughs> and then go from there. Um, like, you do have a point to where you're going to have to make sure you control what you throw out, because you don't want to give your, your opponent something really good with this. So, um, with Harbinger Celestia, I think she could see play. If you're looking at it in a control style of meta, but more or less, I'm looking at this meta. If I can look down the scope, I can say this could be a very high end um, aggro meta, and I just go, well, hmm. So we'll see what happens from here. If anything, I'm going to move over to Explodinator. Four cost, three, two, with a battle cry, summon two, zero, two goblin bombs. Okay, more bombs to go all around, in a sense. <laughs> um, I know this will definitely probably see play in Arena. As far as Constructed go, unless you're trying to heavily focus on a Goblin Bomb deck. Eh? In Wild, same thing, just kind of eh? So... Go ahead, Bob. I know what you're gonna. I know. I know what you're gonna say about it. Dust it. Dust it. Don't even bother to craft it. Moving on to test subject one. Okay, it's just test test subject, but it does cost one mana. The zero two priest minion with the death rattle. Return any spells you ca cast on this minion to your hand. Oh, I think this is good. I think this is very good for more like combat oriented or a tempo oriented priest a tempo priest that wants to you know kind of play that inner fire game but doesn't want to go the combo route uh this allows them to just dump their any buff spells they have or any spells that uh, any um spells onto test subject to get it bigger to allow them to draw cards to just make it a little bit of a threat and just have that tempo play to just attack their opponent with it uh their opponent kills it they get all their spells back and then they can play the spells again, especially if they're playing an inner fire deck. They don't have to worry about I need to hold these, hold on to these cards for the exact right minion to try to do an OTK. They can just go, 
just go, well, I have test subject. Let me just buff him right now, do the best I can, make a, make a huge threat that my opponent has to respond to. If they don't, he's just going to do a lot of damage. And when they do and kill him, I get all these spells back and I can do it again. And I think that's really exciting. Uh, when we talked about the when I talked about the priest legendary, I didn't think that it had what it took because it would just run out eventually, and I didn't think it was a good recurring threat. Test subject, I think, is really good because you're going to get all those spells back, and this that's this is the card you want to use. You want to buff because priest doesn't have a lot of buffs anyway. So the few that they do pack, they're going to want to they want to going to want to play it either to get their OTK or know they have some short sort of assurance and test subject gives them that so i think test subject will definitely see plays in like a combo priest deck that wants to have a little bit more of a tempo focus like they you know they could otk you but they want to be able to also play a more uh tempo focused game to maybe kill you a little bit quick quicker in the meantime i think test subject could really do that to maybe speed that type of deck up a bit it's really nice if anything from like air fire priest i'm not gonna lie um, especially with the next card that I'm getting ready to, to discuss about, but let me just at least touch on Test Subject first, because if anything, like, if you would want to play the quest side of things when it came to this, to give yourself, like, a double-edged, um, win condition, you could use, like, Test Subject in, like, Inner Fire and things like that. Or just say screw it and just use the death rattle stuff and just keep um, Amara on hand when you need it, drop it down, and then just go, all right, let's just start going from here. So I'll go ahead and jump into extra arms, three cost priest spell with give minion plus two plus two, add more arms to your hand that gives plus two plus two. Really nice, really useful, like I said, those inner fire type uh combo oriented priest decks test subject is another is a good target for it and if anything i think extra arms does see some sort of play so ball i kick it to you yeah, extra arms which basically gives you a, a copy of the same card in in your uh in your hand just more arms is essentially extra arms it just doesn't give you give you uh a copy of the spell to play so you basically, you play it, it adds plus two, plus two to the minion. You then are given another three cost spell that gives plus two, plus two to the minion, that, where that's all that does. Um, I think this sees play more in a, again, tempo priest, uh, where they just want to buff up, buff up some of their minions, minions to kind of play a more tempo-oriented game. So a more aggressive tempo priest, I think, plays extra arms. I don't think it sees play anywhere else, um, because priest will shift more to a controlling bit. Outside of tempo, but I think in a more tempo-oriented deck, I think you do play extra arms. Next up, we have Bomb Toss, which is a two-cost hunter spell that deals two damage and summons a zero-two Goblin Bomb. If you go, guess if you're going the Goblin Bomb route, this is okay to deal two damage, or you can just play, you know, the one-cost spell that does two damage, you know. Whatever floats your boat. In that regard, again, I don't think any of the Goblin Bomb stuff is really good. And when you basically compare this to what Hunter already has, um, there's no reason to really play this because it's just overpriced. So I really don't think this is going to see a lot of play. I think a lot of people are going to go, oh, I have to play this, and then realize, wait a minute, we have a better spell already. What are we doing? Heck, you know, you know, no, no matter what, they just have a Hunter just has better spells. Uh, don't, it's not going to see play. I the the only reason I disagree with it, or at least that it doesn't see play, is because while Arcane Shot is useful like as a one cost, this can also see play in potentially a spell based hunter, just because just I'm dealing two damage, doesn't matter where I'm dealing it. Even with my hero power for that matter, I deal two damage, just tap and that goes directly to face. If I don't have my arcane shot in hand, I've got at least bomb toss to fall back on, and I've got a zero two minion on the board. Just here you go. Ex Just for the except heck of it. here's the thing: spell hunter is even more predisposed to be, be needing to use beasts because they have spells that proc based off beasts, and that creates beasts. You have a zero two goblin bomb that you can't do anything with in a spell hunter. The spell hunter is not going to pack anything for you to activate that goblin bomb to kill that goblin bomb. You don't have anything in that spell hunter deck to do the job. 
And for them, they need to maximize what kind of spells they, they do have for aggro, for removal, whatever they need. And Arcane Shot is just better. And they're not going to, they're not going to take out something else like, you know, um, Flanking Strike or any of their other really good removal spells uh, to basically toss and bomb toss. It does not help their end game, even though they don't have any minions. Basically, you may be taking out a better spell to put Bomb Toss in, and it's not going to help your in-game. Spell Hunter does not play this card. We'll see what happens when the Ace Pantry comes out. If anything, I'm going to scoot over to Astral Rift. Two cost Mage Spell adds two random minions to your hand. Okay. So for two, I get to add two to my hand. Um, they're random minions, so I don't really even get a selection at that point, and it's just, uh, you throw it away at this point, just no. You, you really don't need Astral Rift, as far as Mage goes. Bulb. Unstable Portal saw so play for two. I think Astral Rift will see to some degree, some degree of play. It's two random minions that you didn't have before that you can basically play, play out. I don't, like I said, I don't think it's going to see a lot of play. I do think it's, it is going to see some degree of play. Now, in Wild, uh, like with a deck like Randomonium, uh, I say I would say uh, Unstable Portal sees play over Astral Rift because you get a random minion that costs less rather than just two random minions, and I prefer the one that costs less over two. But I think in Standard, I do think that there 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 is an argument to be said to be able to basically play Astral Rift, get two get two minions in your hand to just keep on playing. Especially if they become the rightmost minion that you can then play with Luna and just go boop. Um, I do think that there are applications for this, but I think it's probably a very narrow application. Yeah, the reason, if anything, the big reason also why Unstable Portal Soul play was because of that discount. I don't think Astral Rift gets to see play just for that, you know, that potential one-off of the uh, loop Stargates or Luna just for it. Well, I so think also like, the fact yeah, that this is way. giving you essentially a free minion, a free minion per one mana, I think is good. I think people are going to look at it going, I get two free, I get two minions, or I get a minion, I get, essentially I get a free minion for one mana, and I get two of those. You know, I think it's good in that way. I get two minions in my hand for two. Boop. And then I can play them out later, and there's a lot of things I can do with it. Like I said, I think there is... I think it's going to see some amount of play because I think there's going to be people, people remember Unstable Portal that can remember that these that can these can actually be some good effects. That's a very cheap spell, and that cheap spell can give them random minions that they can play later on the game. I think it's going to see some app. It's going to it's going to be applied. It's going to see some use. It's going to see some see some play. I hope if anything that you know when it comes to and down to it, it'll be from Primordial Glyph because then it'll just be like, oh, this costs zero. Boom! I get two free random minions. I don't know what it is with with you just hating on getting ran, free random minion or getting getting random minions in your hand all of a sudden. Um, apparently, something happened uh, last year that really turned you off to like, I get a ran, free red ran, random minion. Pooey, it's bad. Um, I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know who went back in time and scarred you, but um, I think Astral Rift is good. I do think people are going to play it. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be widely played, but I don't think people will just will just you know, look at a two cost spell that gives them two random minions. And go, well, this is garbage. I think it's a. I think it's going to see play. Next up, we have Secret Plan, which is a one cost hunter spell that allows them to discover secret. This is going to see play, um, whether it's in uh, a secret hunter deck. But most secret hunter decks in uh, Wild are going to be spell hunter. You want to talk about a spell that sees play in spell hunter? Here it is. Allows them to discover secret and just keep that going. I think this sees play. Definitely. So you're getting a secret for one. On tempo, I get to play that secret for two. Then on three, uh, you get to do something. I don't know exactly what you're doing on three. Like, you could go Animal Companion or just, like, tap and scream. Plus, if anything, this helps power up your Spellstone. Because, like, you're going, one, I have a secret. Two, play that secret. And then having the spellstone in hand just allows for that regeneration. So I do like it. I do think it does see play. 
Next up, I have Necro Mechanic. Five cost, three six. Your death rattles trigger twice. It's a hunter exclusive. And I'm just like, wait. Just wait. Baron. B Baron Riverdale has come back to life. In Hunter. What? Like, what's going on over here? Um, I don't know if this is play. I mean, don't get me wrong, the stat line on this thing is really nice. The effect is useful and beneficial, but it's just like, I don't know. Bob, do you have an argument to convince me here? I mean, you think maybe a Death Row, Death Row Hunter deck, you'd want, it, want this, because the Death, death Row triggering twice would be nice, but... Death Row uh, Hunter, the current flavor in Death Row, a Death Row Hunter deck right now, and I think it's the flavor that's that's going to they're going to keep, is um, where they're going with uh, the eggs. They're making five five beasts, and yeah, that's nice. You can basically make two five five beasts, but the way they're activating them, um, it's going to fill your board very quickly, and that kind of limits what they want to do. And I think they'd want to just. Use, I think Hunter would kind of want to go with, with the current way they had their combo set up uh, rather than with Necro Mechanics. So it might find a home there. Might being a stretch and, opt and the op optim uh, uh, optimal word. Or, uh, but I don't know. This is a big question mark for me. I know where they want this to go, which is that in a Goblin Bomb Mech Hunter deck. But we all know how I feel, think that's going to go, which I don't think it's going to see play in that regard. Which means we have to think about Hunter in the way that they are playing Death Rattles currently. And the question is, do they want those Death Rattles to consistently go off twice? And the answer is no. With giving cubes and all that, uh, <coughs> cubes, the limited amount of resources they have to play dead, you know, I'm not sure if Necro Mechanic really sees play because I think they might want to, I think they're going to be, they're going to be more interested in treating the, triggering their Death Rattles when they want to rather than having those Death Rattles go off twice. So this is pretty much one of those uh, those cases where I'm going. It really depends on how uh, egg hunter egg hunter decks feel the bit those big hunter decks feel whether they want those death rattles to go off twice or not. Um, maybe a more big hunter maybe puts this in. So maybe that when Katharina dies, maybe you get two beasts that hit the field on her death rattle. Maybe that's. That's the application of this minion, but again, this is one of those, I think I'm with Eddie, I'm going, I'm really not sure about this one. I'm really not sure if the um, if the environment and the atmosphere is right for this card right now. Next up, we have Research Project, which is a two-cost mage spell, where each player draws two cards. Think of it as Cold Light Oracle, the spell. Does the C play? Uh, maybe a more tempo or tempo or uh, uh, aggressive oriented mage decks. I don't think really it would see much play in uh, more control decks. Uh, and bill mage really isn't a thing. So I think maybe in tempo mage decks this might see play. But that'd be about it. Uh, I would say that cold light did see play, so I'm not ruling this card out. But I think tempo would be the one to use it. Uh, and they may have some better cards anyway. I like the ideal of Mill Rogue. Or not Mill Rogue, but Mill Mage. Just research project. I Gus both draw two. And then, you know, Cold Light Oracle. Cold Light Oracle. Just screw it. I'm gonna make it to where it be a thing. Just because you can, but. Research project. Um, Eddie, what are you researching? I am researching how to mill my opponent. Okay, exactly. good luck with that. Exactly. Oh, look, you have all this stuff in your hand. It'd be a shame if I started milling your deck. Especially in mage. But if anything, this, this more or less he's playing like a burn mage style kind of thing. So. If anything, I'll move over to Flark's Boom. Zuka, a cost hunter spell. Summon three minions from your deck. They attack enemy minions, and then they die. Simple, basic explanation. 
So it's just like, aha, whoosh, here's three of my minions. And then with Rush, and then they just die. So if anything, if you're building a death rattle type deck, really nice, really useful. It does thin the deck, of course. Um, eggs and other death rattles do get to go off, so... Um, I think this does get to see some play. So, because, like, if anything, I also look at, like, uh, Call of the Wild. And it's just like, Call of the Wild was so good at A. Let's reprint that card, but this time, make it to where it only hits enemy minions. And then they die at the end. So, Bob, I'm kicking this one to you. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. I think this is the weakest of all the spells. To be per perfectly honest. Like, you're talking about a Death Rattle deck. Yeah, if it's more of a mid-range Death Rattle Hunter deck, then that that's fine. They they pop out, they attack minions, they die, and the Death Rattle... Uh, basically, if they didn't, if they hadn't died by attacking, the Death Rattle, then they die and the Death Rattles go off. That's fine. But here's the thing. Death Rattle Hunter right now falls into two camps. You have the Egg Camp... And you have, or you have maybe with Katharina where you're looking for bigger minions. And what's the payoff of the bigger minions? They show up, they attack the enemies, instead of being ready to attack your opponent's face, and then they all die. That's a huge waste for what you want to do. So it doesn't go in that deck. It doesn't go in the eggs, because you, you play this, you summon the cubes or the eggs, er, everything that you would, you, you would need to set up these combos. The eggs can't, any of the eggs that show up can't attack the minions, so you can't use the, play the board. And the cubes are now worthless, so you just use them attack and they just die and nothing happens. Same thing is the, the deck that they're pushing, which are, are Golem Bombs, or, you know, Golem Bomb stuff shows, uh, Golem Bombs show up, but mostly probably Golem Bomb activators. They run into things, they die. Alright, if the Golem Bombs show up, hey, the Golem Bombs are going to explode, but they just show up and sit there. And if this is a traditional hunt, more aggressive hunter deck, What's the point of playing this late in the game? Because you don't want to go this late in the game to clear the board. It's like this... In reality, this it feels like this has a very narrow application um, to actually be useful. And it's a narrow application for a deck that we are not seeing in Hunter right now. In Wild, I think there may be possibilities for this. But again, I think it's, it's expensive and you may just want to wait one, wait one turn go call the Wild anyway. Um, it's one of those things I'm going, I'm actually not sure, and that's why I say I think it's weak. I think there are potential combo possibilities, like we, I threw out the Mechathun potential combo with this, but it's one of the, it's one of those one in a million type chance scenarios that it's hardly ever going to happen, that it's no use building a deck around it. So, I really don't think it's that great. I think that compared to all the other legendary spells, this one just sucks. Uh, you're not going to get be able to pull off the application you want to with it, and I think you know it's either you're either going to it's either going to go to a deck where basically um, it's kind of just kind of waste your minions and they're just going to die and you're not going to get a lot of value out of it, or it's going to pull big minions and you get a lot of value of clearing the board, but you're losing those big minions, which means you cannot you cannot play to your game plan. So I think I honestly do not think Flark Spoon Zuka is. Next up, we have Whirly Glider, which is a 2 cost 2 1 minion with the Battle Cry 7 8 0 2 Golem Bomb. It is trash, Eddie. Uh, you get another creature on the board. It's a 2 cost 2 1. <laughs> I'm not, you know, wild or happy about it. So I guess our last card would then be Violet Hay. Three cost. Add two random death rattle cards to your hand. Uh, if you're playing death rattle hunter, or not death rattle hunter, uh, death rattle rogue, then you play this. Other than that, you don't. Bull. Yeah, I think this sees play, uh, especially especially in death rattle rogue. I think this sees play. I think this is a strong card for Death Rattle Rogue, and so if Death Rattle Rogue becomes an archetype, it sees play. I think in Wild, this will see play in Death Rattle Rogue, and I think this is a strong card. 
anyway, um, we will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for, for watching. We have more cars to hit up. We should be able to finish it in the next, finish these reviews in the next video. So we'll see you guys then.